Minecraft's bedrock servers are truly something else. I've talked a lot about pay to win Minecraft servers on my channel and meticulously discussed the shady and exploitative strategies many of Java Edition's biggest servers use. But oh boy, I was not ready for bedrock servers. From extremely pay to win servers promoted by Microsoft themselves, entire ripoffs of game modes on Java servers like Hypixel, to servers which aren't pay to win but actually are pay to play, bedrock servers are significantly worse than I ever imagined making even the most pay to win java servers look good in comparison and let's not forget that most of these servers are riddled with bugs overrun by cheaters who reign free due to bedrock's many many bugs it's a huge mess of uncharted territory a territory which we are about to dive headfirst into Let's clarify some key differences of Bedrock servers to Java servers before we go on though. First of all, there are significantly less Bedrock servers compared to Java servers, even including non-featured servers. Speaking of which, there are a handful of servers which are what's known as featured or partnered servers that appear automatically on the Bedrock multiplayer list. Currently, there are seven servers which have explicit partnerships with Microsoft, which control a large portion of the Xbox, PlayStation, Mobile, Nintendo Switch, and of course, PC Bedrock Edition player base. There still does exist other Bedrock servers which you can input the IP address to manually, and of course, there are cross-play servers utilizing Gazer, which Bedrock players can join, such as OG-Network.net. According to this official Minecraft article on featured servers, featured servers are free to play and are all unique in their own regard. We'll be putting that statement to the test later. And finally, one important thing to remember is that Bedrock actually has more players than Java, so these 8 servers command a greater influence than you think, especially considering Bedrock's generally younger player base. The first server we'll be staggering into is Pixel Paradise, a relatively newly partnered server I believe. And you know when even the official Minecraft wiki talks smack about it, there must be some very interesting stuff going on. Let's check it out. Pixel Paradise has your standard run-of-the-mill game modes such as TNT Run, Spleef, and... What the hell is that? Oh yeah, it's also got extremely annoying tropical-themed music that plays on an endless loop. And the only way to actually turn it off is to literally turn off the Minecraft sounds entirely. You can't just turn off music. This has to be some next-level torture device right here. Now, they did have some game modes I had never seen before. Cookcraft was the first to catch my eye until I found out that you actually have to buy access to this game mode, as you can see from their Marketplace store page. That's right, it's pay to play. Alright, I thought I'll try out another game mode. What about Volcano? Oh. It's pay to play as well? How about this game mode here called Islands, which is featured front and center? That seems pretty cool. Oh, you have to pay $9 just to access this one as well. It's more expensive than the others. You can join and play for a limited time or in a limited area as a free player though. And from what I could gather, Volcano is just the prison's game mode in a slightly different theme and Islands is just Skyblock also in a slightly different theme. And Cookcraft seem to be riddled with pay to win elements accessible from the literal Minecraft marketplace. Here's a $25 end king who rents out your entire restaurant. You can become a VIP chef by spending about $40 worth of mine coins, receiving in-game currency, titles, and boosters. Now, the game mode is actually kind of unique. It reminded me of Papa's Burgeria or Pizzeria, where you make food to give to customers, except Cookcraft has significantly more thieves for some reason. However, as soon as I finished the day one tutorial, which took roughly four or so minutes, I could no longer play. Every time I tried to open the shop, it would just pull up the market, forcing me to buy access to the game mode in order to continue. So yeah, I got to play for a grand total of four minutes until I could no longer progress without paying. So what game modes can we actually play without paying then? Well, there's Guess Who, which is basically just hide and seek, Battle Boats, which seems to be some sort of boat-based PvP game mode that is very janky, and Isles of Adventure, which is just smaller minigames renamed so players don't know that it's literally just a dropper or swimming underwater. Pretty uninteresting. Unlike my subscriber count, which is very interesting and needs to reach 500,000 as soon as possible, so consider subscribing if you enjoy my videos, no pressure. Now, I wasn't about to let this sorry excuse for a server extract my hard-earned mine coins just so I can play Cookcraft. So I did some research into their pay-to-play game modes to see if they were really worth it beyond the limited content we can see as a free player. From what players mentioned in YouTube videos, their Volcano and Island game mode aren't anything to write home about, and you're better off buying Java and finding a server to play those game modes on instead. 
And for the love of God, please do not spend $40 to become a VIP chef. You can literally buy Minecraft Java for less than that, and I advise you do so. Pixel Paradise is deservedly the most unpopular of the eight featured servers, and how it managed to get official Microsoft partnership with as many paid win and even pay to play game modes is beyond me. Actually, you know what? It's not, because to buy anything on the server, you first need to buy mine coins, meaning Microsoft gets a cut of every single thing sold. Makes a lot more sense now, huh? As long as it lines Microsoft's pockets, these servers can exploit children as much as they want, but God forbid they swear on their own private realm. Really great priorities there, Microsoft. But anyways, in comparison to the next server we are going to talk about, Pixel Paradise really does seem like a paradise. Mineville is another partnered server owned by the same company that owns Pixel Paradise. And it's basically Pixel Paradise on steroids. This server has six game modes, and out of those six, you have to pay to play Prison, Skyblock, High School Enrollment, whatever the hell that is, Farming Simulator, and Evolutions, which therefore leaves just Dungeon Simulator as the sole free game mode. So what is Dungeon Simulator? Well, it's the most bare bones mechanics of an RPG, stripped of everything interesting. You just kill mobs, level up to get new weapons and access to new boring dungeons. That's all. This is a server where almost all the content is locked behind a paywall. And of course, just paying to play wouldn't be enough. Their game modes such as Skyblock have V-Bucks, sorry, I mean Skybucks, as well as another expensive $40 VIP pass, $8 ore generators, minions, and much, much more. We don't even get a tutorial with five minutes of gameplay this time either. As soon as you try to go to your island, the marketplace screen will be thrown into your face as you are eloquently tossed out by the virtual bouncer. Once again, I wasn't about to give this server money, so I went and checked out a few YouTube videos of some poor kids who did, and from what I gathered their skyblock and prison aren't anything unique or worth spending money on. They are both super basic and once again, your best bet is to buy Java Edition and play skyblock there. High school roleplay interested me though, as I'd never heard of anything like it before, so I joined to check it out. And maybe it's just cultural differences between Australia and America, but I didn't realize that high school involved mining various ores in what I presumed to be the cafeteria. I didn't feel like slaving away in the mines during my lunch break, so I joined the fighting class instead, where Sensei Wu informed me I needed to take up the blade and collect zombie flesh. I was really confused about what this game mode actually had to do with high school at all, and it seems they just got a bunch of random grindy Minecraft tasks, like mining and killing mobs, and threw them into a high school setting to attract kids who aren't even in high school yet, just like many Roblox games do. To any of you that want to live out some weird high school roleplay fantasy, Mineville High School Roleplay is not for you, just close your eyes and pick a random anime, and that should suffice. You'll find pay to win microtransactions all over Mineville's game modes, as forcing their predominantly child player base to pay for their game mode just isn't enough. Some of you on Twitter even reported that upon buying passes for Mineville and Pixel Paradise's game modes, that later they were no longer usable, as new or updated passes released, forcing players to buy them again. The server, while more popular than Pixel Paradise, still only gets around 200 to 500 players, which is considerably lower than its other featured server counterparts. A truly atrocious server all round, but at least it doesn't have a rampant cheater problem, as the next few servers we'll be talking about seem to have. Alright, moving to the larger featured servers now, as they are all somewhat similar hub-based minigame networks. Mineplex is the first we'll talk about, as it has some glaring issues. Now of course, the first thing thrown in your face is their VIP rank, conveniently priced so that you have to buy multiple bundles to afford it. I was told that their minigames are quite laggy, but honestly from my own gameplay it wasn't too bad, although that may be just because I'm used to playing with a higher ping. One element of the server I really want to hone in on is survival. You see, every time I've tried to join Mineplex Bedrock Survival Server, I get a connecting message and just never connect. I tried this a few months back as well with the same results. So I asked a smaller YouTuber, PotatoPie25, who's very knowledgeable in Bedrock servers and his community. He gave me a lot of useful info for this video, so check his channel out. And he told me that Survival has been broken for two years and he's only ever been able to join it once in all that time. The Mineplex forums have a bunch of similar posts dating back as early as last year of players complaining that they can't join survival or haven't been able to join and continue playing for weeks at a time. Not that you would want to join it anyways, because Bedrock has a massive cheating issue. I won't go into detail today on exactly how the cheats work, as it's a video for another time, but basically all you need to know is that there are certain Bedrock cheats which allow you to edit and modify your inventory on multiplayer servers, as well as use a variety of movement and combat-based hacks possible as Bedrock servers don't really have good anti-cheats like Java servers do. 
In fact, this problem is so prevalent that when we added Bedrock support to my own Java survival server, og-network.net, we had to disable a few plugins like slash law, as Bedrock cheats could exploit this plugin's NBT editing capabilities to modify the items into whatever they wanted. Mineplex Bedrock Survival is infested with hackers and illegal items, and you can see there are quite a few videos on YouTube showcasing such issues. It seems that the few active players of Mineplex Survival have accepted it though, and illegal items and cheaters have actually become normalized due to them being so common. Mineplex Survival is not maintained, barely functional, and infested with illegal items and cheaters. Why the hell the game mode is in such dire straits is beyond me. Guess it's just down to poor management and laziness. Other servers which have survival such as Lifeboat simply seem to have just thrown it together with a basic essentials plugin and called it a day. Supposedly Lifeboat's survival game mode has over 600 players online and upon joining it, it seems like an anarchy server with a few commands. Besides the insane lag from a server I supposedly got 37 ping to, there was no protection and PvP is on, it's utter chaos. Within the first 5 minutes of playing, I found various grief bases, players were speaking 7 different languages in chat, and I found 3 players that spawn and casually 1v3'd them with just a wooden sword. One guy had almost full diamond armor as well. I don't know what kind of fever dream I walked into here, but honestly, this is great! This is the kind of scuffed survival Minecraft server which was everywhere back in 2012 and earlier, and is something which has long since become extinct on Java. I mean players were literally talking about their hacks in the chat, and I'm assuming that there are illegal items all over this server, as you can supposedly use the slash give command straight up with cheats. I guess the lack of effort and maintenance on these survival servers kind of gives them a charm which has been lost to most Java servers for over a decade now, so I'm kind of conflicted as to whether they are good or bad because I do miss this a lot. Now, not all Bedrock minigame servers are bad. The Hive and Cubecraft are pretty good, with original and unique game modes, as well as a mostly cosmetic-based microtransaction system, so there are still good minigame options beyond the atrocities we've talked about in this video. But it's clear that many of these featured servers are getting away with doing the bare minimum due to a lack of competition. The last server we'll talk about is probably the most unique Bedrock featured server yet. In a very mobile game-like fashion, as soon as you join, you are prompted with the daily login bonus, allowing you to gain the server's premium currency, gems, by getting a login streak. Galaxite is a server with a very cool spawn. I quite like it, and their game mode characters and animations are very creative as well, so clearly a decent amount of effort has gone into these. As for the game modes, well upon joining Core Wars, this cool cinematic played when the game starts, and it seems to be a unique take on Bed Wars, where you upgrade your drill and protect your core. Then there's Rush, which is basically just Sky Wars, Parkour Builders, which is just parkour, Playground, which seems to be like a minigame or arcade mode, but most interestingly, Kronos. Kronos is like a mini battle royale, where the world is slowly corrupting and shrinking. There's a time bar, and if you have time left, you can respawn, and the only way to gain time is to kill other players. Instead of looting players' items, you upgrade your own and get special tokens after each kill. If your time runs out, you die, and it's last player standing, wins. There's launch pads and stuff all over the place, and honestly I had a lot of fun playing this, although that may be because I absolutely destroyed my opponents who may not even be old enough to go to school. Now, what's most unique about this server is something I'm genuinely surprised I didn't see more in the other Bedrock featured servers. Taking inspiration from every mobile game ever, Galaxite has seasons and a battle pass which will set you back a solid 15 bucks, ironically more expensive than the $10 most AAA games charge for their battle passes. You can of course buy battle pass levels but they are very expensive, with a measly 5 levels costing over $10. They also sell special ranks and oh so many cosmetics. I guess they looked at the success of the popular freemium model that has taken over modern online gaming the past few years, with Overwatch 2 being the latest victim, and sell a variety of cosmetics, taunts, hats, bundles, and so much more. Now to be fair, while the cosmetics and battle pass are thrown into your face regularly, the server isn't really pay to win at all. In fact, compared to what we've seen on other servers today, it's actually pretty decent. Coupled with the fact that they have actually put effort into making their game modes at least look cool and unique, Galaxite isn't all too bad. Although it's really saying something when a server with extremely aggressive microtransactions regularly thrown into your face at every turn is the best we get when you look at some of the other featured servers. I also think it's only a matter of time before somebody does exactly what Galaxite does, but also makes it extremely pay to win.
Playing PvP game modes on these bedrock servers inflated my ego like crazy. The players are so garbage, probably because they're playing on their phones, that I felt like an absolute PvP god. I mean, come on, what Java server can you ever just 1v3 some random dudes with diamond armor with just a wooden sword? I could see myself having a lot of fun on these absolutely scuffed survival servers, especially. But it's also clear how exploitative and predatory many of these servers have become, and yet are still endorsed by Microsoft as they get a healthy cut of every sale. I wouldn't be surprised if such pay to play servers only continue to pop up over the coming months until a time in the near future where the featured server list solely consists of them. Microsoft letting such atrocious servers gain partnership will only continue to set a negative precedent for the future. For all you Bedrock and Java players out there, if you want to play a good survival server which isn't scuffed and is properly maintained with plugins, check out my server, og-network.net, port 19132. Be sure to subscribe, thank you all so much for watching.